Hello everybody, my name is Anthony from SteamFirst.com and this is the Corsair K70 keyboard. Uh, this review is going to be a little bit different than my other ones and then I'm not going to show my face. Uh, this is just a quick test for a different type of thing I want to do because I have a product that I meant to review that is kind of difficult for me to do it in my normal uh, product review fashion. So we're just going to go ahead and test it out with this and then see what people, as in you guys, think. So, yes, first off, let's start with the physical overview of the keyboard itself. Now, first thing you will notice is that the keycaps on my particular keyboard are not the default keycaps that come with it from the factory. Uh, that is because I found them incredibly uncomfortable and just annoying to type on. I know a lot of other people don't, and most people wind up not changing their keycaps. But I personally have a very uh, weird preference on that. And I wound up picking up the Key Cool Rainbow uh, keycap set off of Mash Drop when it was being for sale there. Link in the description. These aren't too different. I found them a little bit, like, I guess, bigger. And um, I don't know, just a little bit bigger and, like, just a little bit different shape than the ones that come with this keyboard. And it's just more comfortable for me. That and they're also made out of that uh, PBT material that I said I liked in my Mechanical Keyboards 101 video. So, yeah, uh, I did keep the default space bar, though, because I love this space bar. It is a, a nice, like, rubber textured uh, one, and it's, it's very nice. That and the key cool one didn't fit. I need to sand it down and do some stuff. Uh, I don't feel like doing that uh, right now or lately, so, yeah. Uh, and also notice that I opted for the red switched version. Uh, that is simply because I prefer Cherry MX Red Switches. I believe this also comes in blues, browns, blacks, and I think whites. I'm not sure, to be honest with you guys. But I'm pretty sure it comes in a brown, black, and blue as well. Uh, anyways, on to the physical overview. The keyboard itself on top has a nice brushed aluminum uh, finish, and I think it actually is brushed metal. Um, you'll also notice that it doesn't attract nearly as much dust or fingerprints as most brushed aluminum finishes do. I'm not sure what kind of like magic -y witchcraft they put into that, but uh, it's very nice. There is some cat hair though because my cat has been uh, nesting on my desk lately. It's very annoying. And uh, anyway, onto that, you'll also notice a weird uh, design feature is that the bottoms of the switches are exposed. Uh, personally, I'm not a fan of that. It looks unfinished to me. It's just like a, like an aesthetic -y thing for me. It just looks bad. I'm not sure if there's any like actual risk of damage from this. I'm not sure if there's anything that could actually damage the switches in any way. I'm pretty sure it's perfectly safe or else they wouldn't have chosen this, uh, this design. However, uh, take that into consideration when purchasing this keyboard that it, it, if you're it want, if you're a person who's like into looks, then perhaps this isn't the one for you. Uh, but that shouldn't really uh, sway your choice too much as it is still a very solid keyboard. I'll get onto that later. Uh, now you'll notice on the top right of the keyboard, there is a nice volume slider in the form of a rolly buttony switch thing. And you, it's, it has a nice uh, metal finish and you just uh, roll that back and forth to turn the volume up and down, which is a very nice addition. I do quite like it, although I find myself never using it. Although it is in a very convenient place since it is right next to my mouse hand. You also notice media keys up above the number pad starting from left to right with stop, rewind, play, pause, and fast forward. As well as three buttons towards the top uh, right as well. Uh, starting in from left and right. This one lets you uh, customize the lighting pattern of the keyboard. So by default, every key is lit up. However, you can press this down until it blinks or whatever, and then it'll let you uh, press whatever keys you want to be lit up. Uh, personally, I think mine are set to what looks like Counter-Strike, but you can set yours however you want. And you can also obviously press it again to switch between all keys. The one next to that one looks like a little sun. Obviously, adjust the brightness. So it has three levels of brightness, or four if you count off. So starting with off, it's, a, it's dim slightly brighter and then obnoxiously annoyingly bright uh, I, I do like how bright and vivid the LEDs are and I'm pretty sure that the design choice I mentioned earlier is to show off the LEDs lighting more vibrantly 
which I do appreciate. It looks very nice when the default keycaps are installed. However, with mine, it just looks kind of gross. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there's that. Then onto the bottom of the keyboard, you'll notice uh, instead of two feet at the front or back, this one has four feet. One's on the bottom that come out from side to side, and then one's on top that come out from top to bottom. Or, I'm sorry, it's the other way around. The top comes out from side to side, and the bottom comes out from top to bottom. Uh, this allows for a variety of different angles for the keyboard. So the way I keep mine is just having the back feet out, which leaves it at kind of a downward slant. However, you can uh, pull out all four feet, have it completely flat, or put in the back feet, only have the... Uh, the uh, front feet out and it'll go to like a kind of like a, a, an upward slant which I find really nice it's also it also comes with this really nice uh, rubber uh, or I mean sorry plastic uh, uh, wrist rest that attaches to the bottom of the keyboard via some clip-on hinges and it actually adjusts on its own through those hinges so no matter what position you have the keyboard in the uh, wrist rest accommodates, which I find really nice. And the wrist rest, though it looks obviously kind of bad, it's kind of comfy, and I found myself using it more often than not. Okay, so on to the cable now. It comes with a nice, I believe it's a six foot braided cable. It is very thick. There are uh, two, uh, two wires in there uh, that fork off into two USBs. Uh, one of them is for the keyboard and I believe the LEDs itself and the other is for the USB port on the back Which I will get to in a moment uh, So this is a very very thick thick cable. It is very hard to work with and route when you're first uh, Installing this keyboard. So obviously take that into consideration uh, Though that's there's no complaints on that because that's just how these braided cables typically work All you gotta do is work with it for a few minutes and it'll uh be soft like butter as they say so if we look at the I guess top edge of the keyboard now you see a USB port which is very useful although it's a single USB port and no headphone or mic ports which is I guess all right I, I suppose that's really a stupid thing to add to a keyboard uh, but also more peculiar like you'll see a switch on top that says one two four eight and BIOS what that does is it adjusts the rate at which your computer pulls for keystrokes in seconds so obviously one being the quickest then two four eight obviously ranging in slowerness that's good for certain games i guess where you got to be either faster or slower paced and the bios option is for older computers who i guess can't pull for keystrokes that quickly Although if you have a computer that old, I suppose you probably wouldn't be using a keyboard like this. Instead, you'd be using that money towards a new, uh, well, everything. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the physical overview of the keyboard. Uh, there's not like non-physical overview because I don't think there's any like software drivers that came along with it. Although it is also worth knowing that there is a full RGB LED version of this keyboard with like supposedly 16.8 million color combinations that you customize pretty much everything, which is pretty sweet. Uh, that comes with some software and gyros and stuff, but I actually decided not to pick up that keyboard simply because it's a little bit more expensive, I think by like 30 or $40. And uh, I heard lots of problems with the LEDs burning out and going dim, so I didn't really want to deal with RMAs or anything. So I just got the normal uh, red version. Uh, it's still a very solid keyboard if you uh, do the old uh, bend test. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't flex or anything under all my strength. It is a ve it's very comfy to type on in all of its positions, although personally I prefer that uh, downward slant. And uh, the only real complaint I could possibly muster up is that the default keycaps just aren't comfy to type on. I can get over that weird design choice where the keyboard looks unfinished simply because when I do put black keycaps in, which I do switch it out every once in a while for variety, not with the default ones, but I've got other black keycaps that I use. It just looks it just looks really good. It's a very beautiful keyboard, a very beautiful design. It fits in with pretty much any environment you could put it in. And it's just an all-around aesthetically, physically, and uh, performance-oriented, uh, satisfying keyboard. And I just enjoy it all around. I would highly recommend it if you have the money to drop on it, 
Although I totally understand if you don't want to spend $130 on a keyboard. Uh, but honestly, it's, it's taken my place as my favorite keyboard, knocking the Razer Black Widow 2013 out of the water by a lot. And uh, that one looks finished. So it doesn't look like it has, uh, like they forgot to finish building it. Uh, but it doesn't even matter because if you look at it objectively, this is just a far prettier and just more aesthetically pleasing keyboard. Although, of course, aesthetics don't matter. But as I, as I stated before, it is very comfortable to type on with or without the wrist rest. And it is just very, uh, like, smooth. The keycaps are nice. Uh, the keycaps, the switches are nice. The Cherry MX Reds. Um, I, I would imagine this being just as good with any other switch. I'm not, I'm not necessarily sure. Now, I wrote this script while I was sick, and I'm starting to starting to get, like, really erratic and rambly, so I'm going to stop here. Um, my name is Anthony from SteamFirst.com. Be sure to check out Steam First for all the best news, reviews, videos, and content revolving on all things Valve and Steam. Also, be sure to check out our t-shirt shop at Battle Buddy Apparel. I hope I got that right. If not, I'm literally the worst content creator in the world. Uh, where you can pick up some really sick Steam First t-shirts, like the one I have on right now that you can't see. So just take my word for it. There's some very nice designs there and some very, very good quality t-shirts. And I highly recommend checking them out. And uh, every time you make a purchase there, it helps the site out a bit. So uh, it's a win-win. So uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. My name is Anthony. This is the Corsair K70 Keyboard.